Like moths to a flame, you've thrown caution to the wind for a glimpse into our world. Well, now you're in it. Welcome to Aft Up Stories. Everybody and welcome to a new episode of Effed Up Stories. I am your host, Will Pender. And I am your co-host, Ryan Sharp. And tonight, we're a bit on a developing story. Uh, this is, I've actually watched um, or read several articles that have sprung up in the last 24 hours. It has to do with the pyramid that the Mars rover have captured on Mars. So the big the big deal here is that we might finally have the smoking gun to alien life on other planets. Big deal. Before we jump into that, I uh, want to tell you guys that uh, you know we are covering a lot of fan submissions. You've seen that lately, and if you have an effed up story or picture, uh, we'd like to have it. You can send that to us at our official website. It's effedupstories.com. E f f e d u p S-T-O-R-I-E-S dot com. Go to the menu, uh, click on submissions, fill out the form, hit submit. I'll get it on the website. We'll get it in a podcast. And something that we're going to be doing in the next couple weeks will be podcasts on uh, near-death experiences and one on, um, what was it? Uh, yeah, phantom phone calls. You know, like you get a phone call from a relative uh, you speak for a bit. You don't really realize anything's amiss until the next day you found out that they had died. They were dead the time that they were talking to you. So if you have stories uh, on near-death experiences or phantom phone calls, even like strange phone calls, like I've heard people gotten calls from what sounded like demons and shit like that. If you got that stuff, we want it, and we'll get it into our coming podcast in the next couple of weeks. So, again, if you have that, get to our website, submit that to us, fdupstories.com, and we'll get it out there. And with that having been said, uh, oh, yes, spread that shit on social media, Facebook, YouTube, Google+, whatever, because you might have a neighbor in your apartment building on your Facebook. You don't even know her. She's just an acquaintance, and she might have the most fucked up story you ever heard, and she'll only know to send us that story if you put it there and she sees it and blah 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 so you never know who's going to see this stuff get it everywhere that's how you get our shows that's how we get our shows to you is from you guys submitting your stories so the more people that see that stuff and get their stories into us the more content we can give to you guys so get that out there and with that said to the topic of the evening on um, the pyramid on Mars so <clears throat> as we all know NASA has been exploring Mars remotely using, they're almost like remote control cars, obviously a lot more sophisticated, but they're called the Mars Rovers. Uh, they control them remotely from here on Earth. Anyway, uh, in the past couple days, a very interesting development came to light. And what it is, uh, now this picture was actually taken on uh, May 7th of this year, but uh, you know it publicly came out in a document, I, I believe it was in June. Uh, anyway, the, the camera on the NASA's Mar uh, Mars rover, and this is the rover named Curiosity, managed to catch an image. And I mean, I've seen this image, uh, 
you know, you can see all the rocks and debris around it. This image is very, the, the lines are very symmetrical, it's very clear, it very much resembles one of the great pyramids that we have here on Earth in Egypt. So, well, there's no like, there's no denying that it is a pyramid, right? The 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 question is, is it a pyramid uh, shape created through random erosion um, and and geological activity, or is it one that was created through intelligent design? Well, and that and that seems to be the thing that everybody is is leaning on, and. I'll, I'll address why people are thinking that in a moment. But, you know, the concept of pyramids on Mars, that's not a new concept. That's been floating around uh, for quite a while in quite a few different pictures that have come out. Um, you know, there are not only uh, pictures that appear to be of uh, pyramids, but there are pictures of what appears to be statues who, interestingly enough, feature human and animal faces. Now, that's not unlike what we have in Egypt. I mean, we see these, um, you know, their uh, uh, statues and, well, rock carvings. And they do share the, the you know, the combination of human and animal uh, shapes. And, and that, for that matter, ancient sites around the world. So, I mean, that that's an interesting... I mean, how the hell do you get that on Mars, right? And, like, not only have they seen that stuff, but, I mean, they got drawings carved into the surface there that look like the profiles of our primates, right? So, the difference between those pictures that are floating around on the Internet and what we're speaking about tonight is the perspective and clarity of this picture that the Mars rover had just gotten. So you might ask yourself, you know, like we typically cover the paranormal, so what makes this effed up, right? Well, what makes this effed up is the obvious ties to alien life, right? I mean, this is uh, not the first time that man has captured something that looks man-made on Mars, um, but they've mostly been, some, you know, to a degree debunked with the advancement in technology. For example... Uh, anyone who follows government conspiracies regarding alien life may recall the face on Mars. Now, the face on Mars, this whole thing goes back to the 70s when the Viking spacecraft, you know, that was sent up there and it reached Mars on July or in July of 1976. And part of its mission was to orbit the planet and snap a ton of pictures so that scientists could best plan the landing site for the Viking 2 spacecraft, craft, which was already sent and weeks away from getting there. So, you know, the Viking had been orbiting the planet, taking literally thousands of pictures. And, of course, one of these pictures came back and it showed a region that was approximately a mile long in the northern desert Sidonia region. And it very much appeared to be that of a humanoid face. And you can go Google this. It, it really did or does, you know, that picture that's floating around, it really does look like a humanoid face. And so naturally, once this picture got out, you know, it became the focus of a lot of speculation, particularly among uh, conspiracy theorists and those interested in the notion of aliens and life on other planets. You know, it's been this constant um, focal point of speculation. So now with the, the Mars rovers up there, uh, you know, we have this this perfect opportunity to go check this stuff out. And, of course, that's really not what, what they've been doing. Uh, NASA never really did believe that. I mean, they always said that they believed that it was just, to, you know, conveniently placed rocks and motion blur, right? I mean, the low-resolution pictures. Per paradelia, I believe they call it. Yeah, you know, when people see the faces. The ability of the, of the human mind to create an image of an animal or a human face or whatever. Um, and, out and, of nothing. And that's a real thing. You and I both know it because, you know, we've been sent pictures by people uh, who are convinced that something is a face of something. And, you know, we, I mean, honestly, we look at stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, we believe in the paranormal. I mean, we were strong believers in the paranormal. We've had a paranormal experiences. But every time we look at these things, I mean, we do look at it 
with uh, skepticism as well. Like we, we have to look at it logically and rule out things before we believe. I mean, most of the stories that we tell you guys, I mean, we, we give it to you open and honestly as we've been given the story. We don't always 100% believe in the story we're even telling you. I mean, that that's really on your, um, it's up to you guys to make up your mind. And we just put it out there. You guys decide, right? So In fact, that, that human face, um, at, you know, the face of Cydonia, as they call it, um, I've even seen it depicted with, uh, a li- as a lion's face as, uh, instead of a human face. You know, so I mean, different people see different things. Yeah, I mean, and, and then that's later just... with with higher resolution imagery, you know, um, it's it's only a matter of of looking at the latest satellite imagery that that we received of that area of Cydonia. That you know, you could get how somebody would get a face out of it. You know, there's some bumps and ridges there that you could make, you know, kind of make out to be a face. But it most definitely isn't a enormous, you know, whatever mile long, mile by half mile uh, sculpture. No, and and you know that was one of the things when NASA finally did get those uh, clearer, better, up to date pictures of the Sedonia region. Of course, you know the face wasn't there. I mean, you you could clearly see that uh, it was, you know, just cobbled together. It, you know, it was a combination of what appeared to be, you know, uh, low-resolution pictures and blur, right? I mean, it was just a perfect storm to create that image. And NASA, you know, very proudly used that to, uh, you know, reaffirm their initial statement that, no, this was not uh, an, an alien face in in the Mars. We said that from the beginning. Here's proof. You know, but, there, you know, there are still people that um, believe that is a cover-up and and. You know, I mean, there, there's always going to be those two schools kind of of, of thought of these different uh, aspects. And but, to be fair to the, con- you know, the conspiracy minded of us who do believe that there are NASA cover ups. I mean, there have been ex NASA employees <gasps> who have, you know, left NASA or years later from after working there have said, you know, strange things happened at NASA. You know, the um, people weren't. Not everybody was privy to certain information. Only certain people had access to these images as soon as they appeared. You know, there, so there has been a um, a steady trickle of of people who were officially, you know, I don't have a list in front of me, but uh, you know, there are lists of people, and you can go out and search for yourself who did officially work for NASA and who later have made statements. Some of them have been more cryptic than others. And I've, I've even, uh, uh, just this past, I don't know, three months ago, uh, came across a very technical, but interesting article written by somebody who claimed to, uh, have worked on the programming, compiling the programming for one of these rovers and that they found, uh, code hidden in, in, uh, you know, the base code for the rover that seemed to indicate that there were devices on the rovers that were transmitting information to other receivers, encoded information. Um, and that through the course of this person's investigation, there were strange happenings um, as they kind of got closer and closer to the stuff. And and though he tried to hide his tracks, um, it it appears that somebody kind of caught wind that he was sniffing around, or that somebody was sniffing around. And in fact, uh, an individual had their home and office raided. It wasn't the guy who was actually doing the searching, but when he found out that this guy in his office had his home ransacked and had his office ransacked, and that a bunch of computers had been you know, taken apart and, and, you know, they noticed that cables weren't connected properly, that obviously that there was somebody snooping around. So there's what the point I'm trying to make, I guess, without all the rambling, um, is that there, there is a history at least for, for the conspiracy folks like ourselves of official NASA employees questioning 
the the company line. Well, I mean, to be fair, uh, the reality is that there are things that go on at NASA that is very much like Area 51 and that the information is compartmentalized. Like, if you don't need to know something, you don't. Right. I mean, it, it's and that's strange for an organization that's supposed to be a civilian organization. Well, you, you got to look at it in a, in a different way, though. I mean, NASA would be an obvious company that, you know, the government, which we all know is shady, <laughs> right, would want Indeed. to work with. Because especially regarding top secret uh, space technology, weaponry, and of course, the search for alien life. So why is that such a big deal? Well, for one thing, when we're discussing uh uh, weaponry i mean weaponizing space and just weapons in general you know that that's a government military i mean that's, well, that's usually i believe that's usually left to navy space command okay I mean, they have their whole secret space pro like you know when i say secret space program i'm not talking about the black triangles well i am and i'm not there's the secret space program that everybody believes in because obviously the navy is going to have stuff that they don't want the chinese and the russians to know about um, but at you know at the same time, of course, there's a belief of, in a in a deeper, darker secret space program there. Okay. I and mean, obviously, the the um, Navy Space Command is going to have um, aircraft, and they have you know there has been um, some acknowledgement that they do have spacecraft that um, the public don't know a whole lot about. Um, you know, when they launched the last one. They, they only announced, announced the launch, you know, I think the day before or the day it launched. And, you know, that was a big mystery to a lot of folks. So, the, you know. Okay. Well, well like e even given that, right, I mean, you throw that onto the Navy Space Command. Uh, the other aspect is, you know, the proof of alien life. I mean, of course, we know the government's interested in that. I mean, we got cons we've done shows that spoke about, uh, you know, the, the government involvement with the search for alien life, even uh, uh, possible deals that they had had, you know, with aliens, right? So, the whole Eisenhower thing. Yeah, so, I mean, we know that that's a thing, right? So, w obviously, NASA is the top choice. NASA's got the budget, it's got the funding, got the research, got the history. They're so well... Uh, integrate it with that stuff and it, why is it such a big deal well besides the idea of knowing that we're not alone in the universe it would completely change our outlook on history our origins our even religion like it would it would turn our current beliefs and systems on their head um, the theory you know that you know the shock would be so extreme uh, you know it, it would make people hysterical I mean People, you know, they fear people would riot. It would be chaos. But honestly, I mean, personally, I wonder if anybody but a minority group would even care. I mean, I, I almost picture people are so desensitized and self-absorbed. I almost feel like they'd they'd hear it and they'd think to themselves, well, how about that? And just hop back on their Facebook. Yeah, right? I, 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 I totally agree with you there. I, I definitely see, you know, whatever it is, 10, 15, 20, 40, 50, 100 years from now. When, you know, extraterrestrial life is confirmed in whatever capacity, right? Once it's confirmed, I think we'll have a whole, you know, a whole generation of very disappointed scientists who just stand there with their jaws hanging open, completely <laughs> aghast at the non-reaction from the public. That's Everyone like, will be like, yeah, no shit. We've been watching movies about this for 100 <laughs> years, you know, and reading books Sure, H.G. Wells wrote books about this stuff. Yeah, I know. mean, <laughs> this isn't even as fantastic as, as the books I read, right? It's kind of mellow and and laid back. A little, little ho-hum, you know. <laughs> oh, they're, you know, whether it's bacteria or, you know, the as they say, little green men. Um, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think, you know, there will be a group of people <laughs> like ourselves that will be, you know, jumping up and down and, pointing a finger in our all of our family's face and saying, see, I told you, I told you, see, <laughs> you know, but then there's going to be everyone else. And, and then we'll go to bed and we'll wake up the next morning. We'll go to work and we'll continue paying our taxes and our phone bills and our light bills and playing video games. And, and nothing will have changed. I exactly. Right. But I, I think that that still is, the, you know, the fear 
that the government has, or who knows, maybe, maybe that's the U.S. and Canadian culture, but maybe it's different over in in other countries. Maybe maybe they would care over there, right? So I mean, that's something. Well, it's funny because North America, the North American governments, and well, particularly the United States governments. So we have the Canadian government, the U.S. government, and uh, the Mexican <laughs> government. That's the you know that's North America. So Canada. You know, we've posted a lot of our UFO files. Um, the uh, Mexico has reported on on some high profile UFO things, um, but the U.S. You know, they really clamped down on that, right? You know, if a pilot makes a UFO report, rather than investigating what this pilot's seen out there, I mean, geez, the guy's up there. He's sitting in the front seat. If he says he's seen something, they had to move his plane to go around it. You know, don't lock him up in a loony bin. <laughs> You know, because that's that's traditionally what's happened, right? And that's what what we hear from military people. Well, right? you know, that discredits them and just shuts the issue out. Of you know, so, exactly, it's a very you know they they clamp down on it. A, a very oh well, just by know, doing very that, draconian. right? I mean, it, it shuts their credibility out because they're in a loony bin. It doesn't even matter if it happened. It doesn't matter if what they're saying is one hundred percent true. Is they're labeled a nut? And, you know, what the government media tells you, what you see on TV is what you're inevitably going to believe. I mean, that's just, that's the exactly. way it works, right? So, so in this image, you know, what do we see here? Like in, in the raw image, you know, we're looking, it's, we're looking at a hill, right? There, there's a bit of a hill and we have this, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a pyramid, right? It's, that's the, the geometrical shape of this thing. Is a you know well what uh, what is a pyramid? What sticks out about it is that there's all kinds of rocks and debris around it. Yes, and this is so much clean. It's, it's symmetrical. It's very, it's very finely shaped. It's very uh, distinctive. I mean, there's one, straight lines, right angles, and it, it's very clean. Like you look at the surface. I mean, it's not the highest quality photograph, right? But if you look at the the face of it, you know it's. It's relatively smooth. Well, you know, the interesting thing, and and this is something that I read in one of the articles, um, is that, you know, the, the way that we tell the difference between man-made things and naturally occurring or developing things is that nature has a way of randomizing uh, the shape. and Like, there's a certain, you know, you, you can see, like, uh, you know, where rain would fall, how it would erode in like a, a smooth circular pattern or, um, you know, it, w it would be more randomized. Whereas this is very clear, like you just don't find naturally uh, pyramid shaped rocks. I mean, that's just not, uh, it's not symmetric enough to be that fine, finely detailed like that. And so that's one of the, the you know, the red flags here, or at least the uh, the points that people make to reaffirm that this is actually a man-made object. Uh, now, as to the object itself, people are saying, I mean, this is a pretty clear pretty clear shot. It's pretty close. Um, people are saying that uh, it's about the size of a small car, and you're thinking, well, that's obviously not a pyramid. But what they're also saying is that it doesn't look like the whole pyramid. It looks like the tip of it protruding through the uh you know the desert floor, actually, and not all and not all pyramids are the size of the pyramids at Giza. You know, there's lots of examples of pyramids being used as guide stones. I think is one of the things that I read that that especially in 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 deserts and all through the Middle East that you know these car car sized pyramids were used as uh, guide stones to guide travelers through through the desert. That's an uh, that's an interesting uh, detail as well. Um, yeah, so it doesn't you know just because it's a pyramid doesn't mean it has to be this this monolithic structure. Um, and and also, I mean, look, you know, you look at the three pyramids at Giza. What are they all missing? They're all missing the tip. They're all missing the capstone. And right? that's that's what other people said is that this could be the capstone. That's Whether it's attached to the rest of the pyramid. Or just sitting, like to me, when I look at the raw photograph, and this is just myself, I like obviously, you know, we're we're dealing with a couple of different things here, right? Scale, perspective, 
we, we, we just can't get from a photograph because we're not physically there. So the raw photograph has the, the stone on kind of an angle. The, it, it, you know, like it's on a hill. Um, and the hill, you know, it's not super steep, but it looks like it's on like a, you know, 45 degree angle a bit. And so you have this, this stone kind of jutting out of, of the side of this hill. And it's, it, it, to me, in that, for, in that raw photograph, it doesn't look like it's a vertical structure that's connected to the ground beneath and buried, right? It looks like it's maybe sitting on the surface or it's been, part of it's been de detached. Now, the other uh, scenario here is that the rover is on an angle. And what we're looking at, because you'll see a lot of photographs where it's cropped and people have rotated the image a little bit. So the pyramid looks like it's pointing straight up. But I, I do believe from the raw image, it does appear to be, you know, pointing off to the right. We'll say if you're looking straight at it, the tip is, is pointed off to the right several degrees quite significantly. Well, so I think it's some, in some cases it's being misrepresented in a way. But again, it's hard to tell because we're not there. We don't have the perspective. Hell, the whole rover could be up on, on two wheels, right? <laughs> Well, you know, the, the interesting uh, element, I guess, is that these comments about symmetry and, you know, the theory that it's a capstone, um, th that the symmetry suggests that it's man-made is coming from scientists. Because, of course, this being out there and such a big deal right now, we got all these different scientists uh, looking at it, analyzing it, speculating as to what they think it is. And, of course, we also have... Uh, the conspiracy theorists who are jumping on this as the smoking gun that finally, you know, the, NASA took away that, that Mars phase from us, but now we got this, right? But they do have something, you know, to go on for this. I mean, there, there's a, a, a... Yes, there's a very important little caveat to the to the whole thing, isn't there? Yes, because the pictures, apparently, you know, they were taking at uh, intervals between 20 and 30 seconds apart, so they're they're rattling off image after image after image. And we know this from timestamps on the raw image data. Exactly. And then apparently, at least the word is that NASA stopped the image feed after, you know, very momentarily after that image got out. Right? So and, and even if they didn't stop the feed, they certainly didn't and now isn't this just just totally ironic? For a, a rover, a nuclear-powered smart car, because that's the size of this friggin' thing, right? It's, it's about the size of a smart car. It's nuclear-powered, <laughs> and it's called flipping Curiosity. But yeah. it could, you know, like that's the part that really grinds on me, is that this thing is called Curiosity. And it couldn't be less curious about, about anomalies. It's like, oh, let's look at this flat expanse over here instead of this thing that looks just like a flipping pyramid. Or, or the face. Why, why not go to the Sidonia region and, uh, you know, finally, once and for all, up close, get a picture of this area and debunk it, if, if nothing else. So, you know, if this is true, if NASA did, uh, you know, stop the image feed, right? I ask, why would NASA withhold the pictures for any other reason than there's some kind of obvious genuineness to the pictures? And I can only think of two reasons. One is that NASA doesn't even know what it is yet, but just to be careful, they're going to cut off the feed so that they can go and investigate and figure out what they're dealing with. Number two, it is what it looks like, and NASA and or the government does not want anyone to know about it. Somebody in a black suit walked in, hit the little red button and said, all right, everybody, you know, uh, uh, early day, head home to your families. Uh, I got to talk to the administrator, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there's there's no shortage of, uh, you know, government shutdown stories or cover up. Or, right. I mean, they perme per permeate our lives. I mean, government's everywhere. We pay taxes. We, you know, they're in our schools. They're in our hospitals. They're everywhere. So it's not really fair to say all government, but there's, you know, a handful of upper level echelon folk who, you know, they are the, on the need to know basis. They know, they know the big picture that most of us are missing, right? So 
just to discuss a couple of theories, you know, you know, forget about the, the cover ups and stuff like that for a second. And just to discuss a couple of theories about life on the red planet. Right. Some p- people believe that uh, Mars was actually once a home for highly uh, like a highly developed civilization, kind of like ourselves right now. But, you know, at some point, you know, an Armageddon. Geddon type event had destroyed the planet and they believe this happened between 11 and 12,000 years ago and they also believe that this is the same event that destroyed Atlantis here on Earth and to further run with you know conspiracy theory fever you know some believe that a couple aliens on that planet had survived and they had come to Earth after the catastrophe and if, you know, if we're going to buy into that, that leads into a whole lot of other conspiracies. For example, did those aliens play a role in humanity? You know, are they related or somehow tied to the reptilians? Are they, uh, you know, did they make our pyramids here? Are they the Illuminati? I mean, you could really take a, any oh, one you of could, You could run with these for days. But I think my favorite, my personal favorite for myself and, and has been for years and I, I'm not going to say this is a belief of mine. You know, I never I don't believe in anything. I, I, I open myself to the possibility of all things. I let everything be possible because I, you know, I know too much about science to say any one thing is impossible. And I've, I've, I've had too many strange paranormal experiences that, you know, just throw impossible the word impossible right out the window. But the, the one theory that really intrigues me, and I, I think that I would not be at all surprised if one day we find out that the aliens from Mars are us, that, that at some point there was a thriving civilization, a race of creatures on this nearby planet, um, perhaps going farther back than we ever thought before. You know, that, that, that the, the human line, the human lineage reaches back much further than, than what is commonly uh, um, believed. And that we actually originated, at least in part, on the red planet. Well, well what we now call the red planet, Mars. And at some point, yes, there was some kind of catastrophe. Maybe it was a, a slow catastrophe. It was something, <coughs> oh, no. You know, uh, we're losing our our magnetosphere. We're losing our atmosphere. Our magnetosphere is too weak. Um, the magnetic field of our planet cannot retain uh, or or cannot stop the bombardment of cosmic rays, and it is constantly eroding our atmosphere. We need to find a new home, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, they were in the lucky position of having a sister planet nearby that was undergoing its own changes, you know, and and had become habitable. And maybe, just maybe, a a a handful or maybe more of uh refugees, we'll call them, left Mars and traveled to the planet Earth to colonize and become the myriad of peoples that we call the human race today. Well, see, I thought that same thing when I was Thinking about this whole thing that's that's going on now, we have uh, you know what appears to be pyramid. I mean, they've said they had pyramids up there forever with photographs, but again, this is a much clearer picture that the rover took, and, and not a satellite top-down image. I mean, you can't really tell much. Exactly, that. exactly. And like, if it's true, I mean, the, the, it's uncanny that they have a pyramid up there, and we have them on Earth. Right, I mean, it's, it's that's a very specific, <laughs> it's a very specific structure. So yes, and I know you know the arg- and this is the the the, the devil's uh, advocate argument, of course, is that well, of course, any society would build a pyramid because it's the only shape that can support that kind of, uh, um, you know, that kind of weight, that kind of mass, you know, the the weight distribution and blah 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 blah. But like you said, it's. It's it's such a you know why didn't they just build mounds why why pyramids you know why didn't they just build little structures rather than these huge monolithic you know shapes and if this thing really is just the size of a car well then they could have built it any shape they wanted 
Well, they chose a pyramid. Right, and not to mention the other uh, photographs that people say are of statues, you know, combining human and animal shapes. Again, this is a very prominent thing that happens in Egypt culture, you know, right right back to the, the stone carvings and, and, uh, and stuff like that, like way, way, way before. So one can't help but draw the parallelisms, especially now after finding this right now, a clear photo right now on Mars. So I, if you buy into it that far, you really do have to look at the possibility that they did come down here and that perhaps they are, you know, the... Well, there, there are so many strange inconsistencies with, with human prehistory. You know, we, we just appear in the timeline. You know, I mean, that's the... You, you look in some anthropological texts... And they use these these words that almost seem sensational, right? Like humans appear two hundred to, in some extreme views, you know, and this is considered extreme four hundred thousand years ago. You know, that's a blink two hundred to four hundred thousand years ago. That's a that's a friggin' bl- blink. Dinosaurs were here for millions and millions and millions of years. And then, and I mean, that was 65 million years ago. And then all of a sudden, a primate just walks off the savannas of Africa, starts farming and herding cattle and building houses and creates language and mathematics and geometry and science and, you know, eventually reaches out to the stars all in 200,000 years. You know, where, where, where are the... Where, you know where are the 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 shark scientists and the dinosaur scientists and all this? I mean, sharks have been around for you know seventy million years, eighty million years or longer. Alligators, crocodiles, you know, all these things had immense periods of time to 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 evolve. We'll say, you know, there's there's what's stopping them from from going through that magical process that we went through. And then, you know, out of nowhere in, the, in the, this, this record that we seem to have, this archaeological <laughs> record, we go from, uh, you know, tree swingers to uh, uh, walk in the plains and, and as hunter-gatherers. And then, again, out of nowhere in the blink of an eye, and these are all words that you'll see in anthrop- anthropological texts, in the blink of an eye, out of nowhere, we begin civilization. You yeah, know, so it- there's... There's lots of cause to think that there may have been some kind of outside influence, you know, and the whole alien astronaut theory, you know, maybe we are, we were the alien astronauts. Maybe there were two human families, you know, maybe whatever process, maybe who knows, somebody dropped humans off here and dropped them off up there, you know, and, and, and there was a migration. There's so many possibilities. So essentially... If we are our own, you know, space ancestors. Our own space grandpas. Well, that's what I was going to say. It reminded <laughs> me of Futurama. It's like, Mr. I am my own grandpa. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, so th- there you have it. Uh, what do you guys think? Do, are we our own space astronauts? Are we our own visitors? Are we evolved from aliens from Mars? Is that what they found is our old culture or, or signs of our culture on Mars. Have, have we discovered the remnants of an ancient civilization? That was truly us. <laughs> that was that was actually us. <laughs> right? So some really interesting food for thought, and I think that uh, over the next little while, we're going to see some developments that's either going to outright debunk it, or maybe more will appear and it'll quickly and silently be swept under the rug which i think is more likely yeah me too if they go after it right then they're just legitimizing you know the conspiracy viewpoint and they can never do that yeah they'd rather be wrong and just yeah you know for so for all you you know ancient astronaut folks or, or extraterrestrial believers or for all 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 the people who uh think nasa stands for never a straight answer you know um definitely keep your eye on this but don't lose heart you know i mean we as a popular tv show coined many many years ago 
you know, the truth is out there. We're we're in a we're in a galaxy with with trillions of stars, and we looked out through the deep space Hubble field. And if you haven't seen this image, just go Google it: the deep space Hubble field, and see every spot of light in that image is a whole other galaxy filled with with billions and trillions of other stars. Each star having anywhere from one to a hundred planets and any planet having one to 50 moons. So, I mean, there has to be life out there, whether we find it close to us or far away, you know, hang in there. Yep. I think that about sums it up. And again, if you guys have an effed up story of your own, um, on the paranormal or you have pictures or video, you can get that to us at the official website, effedupstories.com. That's E-F-F-E-D-U-P-S-T-O-R-I-E-S.com. And we're specifically, in the next couple of weeks, looking for stories on near-death experiences and uh, phantom phone calls. So if you have experienced that or know someone who has, get that into us on the website. Uh, and again, just by spreading the stuff on social media, we're a lot more likely to get those submitted stories. So get to it. That way we can have more content to give to you guys. And with that said, we hope you catch us next time. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great night. I am your host, Will Pender. And I am your co-host, Ryan Sharp. And tonight, we're a bit on a developing story. Uh, this is... I've actually watched um, or read several articles that have sprung up in the last 24 hours. It has to do with the pyramid that the Mars rover have captured on Mars. So the big, the big deal here is that we might finally have the smoking gun to alien life on other planets. Big deal. Before we jump into that, I uh, want to tell you guys... That, uh, you know, we are covering a lot of fan submissions. You've seen that lately. And if you have an effed up story or picture, uh, we'd like to have it. You can send that to us at our official website. It's effedupstories.com. E-F-F-E-D-U-P-S-T-O-R-I-E-S.com. Go to the menu. Uh, click on submissions, fill up the form, hit submit. I'll get it on the website. We'll get it in a podcast. And something that we're going to be doing in the next couple weeks will be podcasts on... Uh, near-death experiences and one on um, what was it uh, yeah phantom phone calls you know like you get a phone call from a relative uh, you speak for a bit you don't really realize anything's amiss until the next day you found out that they had died they were dead the time that they were talking to you so if you have stories uh, on near-death experiences or phantom Like moths to a flame, you've thrown caution to the wind for a glimpse into our world. Well, now you're in it. Welcome to Aft Up Stories. <laughs> Everybody and welcome to a new episode of Effed Up Stories, uh, May 7th of this year. But, uh, you know, it publicly came out in a document, I, I believe it was in June. Uh, anyway, the, the camera on the NASA's Mar uh, Mars rover, and this is the rover named Curiosity, 
managed to catch an image. And I mean, I've seen this image. Uh, you know, you can see all the rocks and debris around it. This image is very, the, the lines are very symmetrical. It's very clear. It very much resembles one of the great pyramids that we have here on Earth in Egypt. So, well, there's no like, there's no denying that it is a pyramid, right? The 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 question is, is it a pyramid uh, shape created through random erosion um, and and geological activity, or is it one that was created through intelligent design? Well, and that and that seems to be the thing that everybody is is leaning on and. I'll, I'll address why people are thinking that in a moment. But, you know, the concept of pyramids on Mars, that's not a new concept. That's been floating around uh, for quite a while in quite a few different pictures that have come out. Um, you know, there are not only uh, pictures that appear to be of uh, pyramids, but there are pictures of what appears to be statues who, interestingly enough, feature human and animal faces. Phantom phone calls, even like strange phone calls, like I've heard people gotten calls from what sounded like demons and shit like that. If you got that stuff, we want it and we'll get it into our coming podcast in the next couple of weeks. So again, if you have that, get to our website, submit that to us, fdupstories.com, and we'll get it out there. And with that having been said... Uh, oh, yes. Spread that shit on social media. Facebook, YouTube, Google+, whatever. Because you might have a neighbor in your apartment building on your Facebook. You don't even know her. She's just an acquaintance. And she might have the most fucked up story you ever heard. And she'll only know to send us that story if you put it there and she sees it and blah, blah, blah. So you never know who's going to see that stuff. Get it everywhere. That's how you get our shows. That's how we get our shows to you is from you guys submitting your stories. So the more people that see that stuff and get their stories into us, the more content we can give to you guys. So get that out there. And with that said, to the topic of the evening on um, the pyramid on Mars. So <clears throat> as we all know, NASA has been exploring Mars remotely using they're almost like remote control cars obviously a lot more sophisticated but they're called the mars rovers uh they control them remotely from here on earth anyway uh in the past couple days a very interesting development came to light and what it is uh, now this picture was actually taken on now that's not on like what we have in egypt i mean we see these um you know their uh, uh statues and well rock carvings and they do share the, the you know the combination of human and animal uh, shapes, and and that for that matter, ancient sites around the world. So I mean that that's an interesting. I mean, how the hell do you get that on Mars, right? And like, not only have they seen that stuff, but I mean, they got drawings carved into the surface there that look like the profiles of our primates, right? So the difference between those pictures that are floating around on the internet. And what we're speaking about tonight is the perspective and clarity of this picture that the Mars rover had just gotten. So you might ask yourself, you know, like we typically cover the paranormal, so what makes this effed up, right? Well, what makes this effed up is the obvious ties to alien life, right? I mean, this is uh, not the first time that man has captured something that looks man-made on Mars, um, but they've mostly been... Some you know to a degree debunked with the advancement in technology. For example, uh, anyone who follows government conspiracies regarding alien life may recall the face on Mars. Now the face on Mars. This whole thing goes back to the 70s when the Viking spacecraft. You know that was sent up there and it. Re